If you think about the term serial killer, what comes to mind first? Thanks to the media, someone like Ted Bundy, Richard Ramirez or Ed Kemper is a typical answer. A relatively young, perhaps charming and somewhat intelligent man. It is safe to say not many of us would first think about a sweet elderly lady in their 70s. Someone like the Granny Ripper, Tamara Samsonova. On the evening of July the 26, 2015, a couple walking their dog on Dimitrova Street in St. Petersburg, Russia, made a gruesome discovery. As they passed the pond near house number 10, the dog suddenly stopped as if something in the bushes had caught its attention. Curious about what their pet had smelled, the couple followed the dragging dog and soon discovered a shower curtain wrapped around something heavy. The strange package had actually laid next to the pond for several days, but until now, nobody had paid attention to it. So you can only imagine what the couple saw and smelled when they opened the package and discovered a decomposing human torso. When the police arrived at the scene and realized that all body parts that could have helped identify the victim were missing, they began to interview the local resident. One could think it would be stupid for a killer to dump a body so close to home, but that is exactly what happened. It did not take long for the detectives to figure out that 79-year-old Valentina Nikolaeva Yulanova was the only one absent without any explanation. On top of that, according to the other residents of Dimitrova Street, Valentina's tenant had been seen taking the trash out at an unusual hour a few days earlier. On the following day, July the 27th, the police went and knocked on Valentina's apartment, unsure what they would find. Whatever they had expected, a sweet, polite, 68-year-old woman admitting she had killed and dismembered her landlady was not it. Valentina's tenant, Tamara Samsonova, happily let the officers inside the apartment where they discovered blood splatters all over the bathroom and kitchen. Asked to explain what had happened, Tamara calmly told the police she had killed Valentina after they had rowed about unwashed cups. Tamara had lived with the elderly woman for several months while her apartment was being renovated. But when the flat was ready, Tamara refused to move back home causing her relationship with Valentina to deteriorate. When the two then had another conflict on the night of July the 23rd over a pile of unwashed dishes, Tamara decided Valentina was the one who had to go. The following day, Tamara visited a pharmacy in Bushkin and bought for Nazipan a Russian-made schizophrenia pill. Back home, she crushed up to 50 pills and added the dust to an Olivier salad, which Valentina then later ate for dinner. By the time Tamara woke up at 2 a.m. and went back to the kitchen, Valentina was unconscious on the floor. Disturbingly, it is believed that when Tamara picked up a hacksaw and began to cut her landlady into pieces, Valentina was still very much alive. Going through CCTV footage, the police saw Tamara walking up and down the apartment building stairs to dispose of the bags of body parts. It must have been strange to watch the typical looking grandmother wearing her babushka headscarf, knowing that in the bags she held in her hands were severed limbs and in a large saucepan, a decapitated head. Another chilling thing the police found in Valentina's apartment was various diaries in which Tamara had written about her life. Crimes and admiration for the Russian serial killer, Andrea Chikatilo. As they read, the terrifying realization hit the officers. Valentina Ulanova had not been Tamara's first victim. Part of the diary read, I killed my tenant, Volodya. Cut him into pieces in the bathroom with a knife. Put the pieces of his body in plastic bags and threw them away in different parts of the Frunzensky district. The subsequent investigation eventually connected Tamara Samsonova with at least 12 unsolved murders within the last 15 years before Valentina's death starting with her own husband, who disappeared mysteriously in the year 2000. Back then, the police believed Tamara's story of an unfaithful husband who had eloped with another woman and closed the investigation. But during the years that followed, Tamara began to rent out a room in her house and one by one the tenants disappeared, including Volodya. Some of the victims' bodies, or parts of them, have been found, but many have remained missing all this time. In addition, only a handful of these cases had enough evidence for official murder charges. So, 
in the end, the real number of victims of the Granny Ripper or the Baba Yaba is still unknown. Even though many believe the real number is much higher than 13. But it does not appear that. In the majority of the cases, Tamara's MO was the same. She drugged the victims before cutting them into pieces while they were still alive. As if that was not bad enough, the police also suspect that Tamara had some cannibalistic tendencies and ate part of the victims. The investigation did not find concrete physical evidence to prove this. But Tamara did write about eating her victims, lungs, legs and heads in her diary. Needless to say, the judge in charge of the case, Roman Chebotaryov, sent Tamara to the Kazan Psychiatric Hospital for a comprehensive psychiatric evaluation to ascertain her mental state. The results determined Tamara suffered from paranoid schizophrenia and represented a danger to herself and all those around her. Therefore, Tamara was declared mentally incompetent and the case never went to trial. Since November 2015, Tamara Samsonova has remained in the Kazan Psychiatric Center. When a person is sent to an institution, it may happen that, after some time, they are found competent to face trial for the crimes they committed. But in Tamara's case, the judge decided it was best to keep her in the high-security institution for life. While it is true that there is not much evidence anyway to use in court, these measures prevent us from knowing the real scope of the murders of the Russian Granny Ripper.